Hello, hello. What's going on out there, Facebook? I'm going to wait for some people to join. How's everybody doing out there? Feel free to edit over here in these comments. Hello. What up? This is going to be a conversation and a community thing, so we need everybody to jump in and say hello. This is going to be uh, very informal. This is going to be a conversation and, uh, and not a monologue. So uh, jump on in with questions, jokes, thoughts. Hi, Allie. What's up, Kevin Hopper, Sam? I see you guys over there. You're going to most likely hear from the sound of my cat during this live stream. She lives here as well, and she doesn't have her life. So uh, she's going to be popping in and out of the live stream, certainly, um, throughout the next hour. Um, her name's Neela. She's quite friendly, um, unless I piss her off, and then she bites. And she uh, can be quite violent. Um, but uh, that's really my issue, you know. Um, so I'm just going to chat a little bit here and wait for some more people to jump in. Um, I'm broadcasting live from the Catskills upstate New York where I have uh, relocated during the shutdown to avoid um, being trapped in my New York apartment and potentially dying with the rest of New York. Just kidding. We're going to live. New York is going to survive um, and uh, it's pretty rough what's going on down there right now. Um, but, uh, you know, we're all in a new normal. Um, so I'll get started a little bit here and just kind of start chatting. Um, first I want to put some things out there and one I am not an epidemiologist if that wasn't obvious. I am a uh, I'm a distribution record label guy. Um, so I'm not going to be pontificating on anything medical, um, anything with respect to epidemiology. Um, I am not a medical doctor. Um, and uh, there are great people to help you out with uh, medical advice and, uh, and there's great daily briefings from some of our finest politicians and some of our worst and I'm not one of those. So let me just say that uh, what's going on right now is incredibly troublesome and so concerning and I just want to send love to everyone who's uh, got loved ones who are sick now or, or those of you who are suffering are confused or worried about what's going on, um, to those of you who have lost your jobs, uh, to those of you who are concerned about your jobs or your life or your loved ones, um, my heart is out to you. Um, I'm concerned as well um, about my city, um, about the country and the world, and um, uh, this is a crazy time that we're living in. Um, but what we're going to be talking about today is, as musicians, as artists, and as record labels, how to survive this and to thrive. Um, I am old enough to know that what is going on right now is a lifetime type of event, hopefully something that won't repeat times in our lifetime. Um, but it is, for those of us who are healthy, a unprecedented opportunity to um, take advantage of the situation to create, um, which is the job of artists, is to respond to the times uh, with art and with music and with words and with action. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, and so to start, I think the one thing I wanted to put out there um, to some of the younger folks who might be joining in who um, are, are relatively new to the industry, who have um, lived through the last three or four years of what has been, despite what it might feel like to some people who haven't really taken advantage fully of streaming, is um, we've been in unprecedented good times over the last few years. Um, streaming really has uh, paid off for um, larger artists and for record labels who have catalogs, and um, uh, vinyl and even CD sales continued, and um, in comparison in other periods of the music industry that I've worked within or lived within, um, these have been incredible boom times. Um, but that is the um, that is not the norm. Um, generally speaking, the music industry is a 
living and breathing um, pandemic itself, in a sense. Um, the business is improvisational. Um, it is uh, often disrupted by companies who don't have the best interests of musicians and artists in mind. Um, in many cases, the music industry is uh, reliant on technology companies to build platforms that help us to put our media out into the world. And um, quite frankly, uh, they don't always have uh, the best interests of musicians in mind when they build these tools. They're, um, they're corporations who are trying to gain users and, uh, and music is a product of that, as is television or movies or audiobooks. Um, so, you know, throughout my 20 years in the music industry, I've lived through and worked within and um, really focused on change. Um, I've worked through changes in format, which are generally the big waves of the music industry, or at least they have been since the 90s when I got into the business. And um, for example, when um, in the late 90s when I started in the business, we were, we were thriving on compact discs. Um, cassettes and vinyl were fluctuating, and um, it was really the, the, the earliest boom times of compact discs, and, uh, which, which lasted for a long time. Um, it was a lot harder to operate in that climate, um, but uh, it, it was relatively stable. Um, when CDs got disrupted by Napster and the digital revolution began, um, it started a incredibly tumultuous time that those of us who are old enough to have worked through it know that it was um, uncertain times for the music industry at best. And um, many people thought that the business was going to die completely, that the value of music was going to drop to zero, um, that uh, major labels were going to go out of business, that retail was going to die. Um, every imaginable, the sky is falling uh, mentality um, uh, ripped through the music industry and there was terror and disruption. Um, as we all know, that was a disruptive time, um, but the industry recovered uh, tenfold and, uh, and begun thriving again and began thriving again as um, iTunes launched and the iPad launched and um, and the MP3 revolution began. But while that was uh, a happy time, there was tremendous fear among record labels and artists who were reliant on CDs um, for uh, unprecedentedly high margins um, that were selling like hotcakes and digital seemed to be um, something that if you jumped upon um, you would be uh, you would be cannibalizing your own business, and um, there are many record labels who were resistant to. There's a cat right there, hopefully over there. Um, there are many record labels that were resistant to getting aboard on MP3s because they were terrified of what would happen. Um, and uh, that was a time, a first big time of change that I worked through, and um, I recognized that um, people were going to release music forever, no matter what the format and that I enjoyed working um, during times of change and helping people to adjust. Um, uh, and as someone who's always been into technology and um, new ways of listening to music, um, I saw this as something that was really exciting. And um, at that time, I switched from working at a CD distributor to working for a digital distributor. Um, and I've continued to do that work now for um, the last several years. Um, and then what happened next was uh, MP3s began to be disrupted by Spotify and streaming. And that was the next, the sky is falling moment in the music industry. And where I'm going with all this is that every five to seven years, there seems to be a the sky is falling moment in the music industry. Well, this one, my friends, is a sky is falling moment that the entire world is sharing. It's not just the music industry. And in fact, the music industry, um, as far as streaming music goes, is probably better positioned than many, many industries um, that you can all think of. Hospitality, uh, live music, of course, is suffering all live entertainment because we can't leave our house. Um, there are so many industries that are getting pummeled by this um, that those of us who 
Um, part of our art is making recorded music um, or recorded video. Um, this is an opportunity for us to do what we do, do what artists do and respond to the times and put positivity into the world and figure out how to exist in this normal. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. Um, I'm going to check some questions here and say hello. What's up, Jacob, Brent Tactic, Nathan Hunt, Rio, Jeanette, Ali? How's everybody doing out there? Um, glad to have you aboard. Um, this will be archived so you can watch it again and again, both at bedtime or during the workday. Um, I'll, try, I'll try to uh, keep it as informative as possible. Um, but again, feel encouraged to ask questions um, as they come up. Hey, Chris, how you doing? Hey, Jordan. Um, and uh, let's make this a conversation. Um, I'm your moderator, um, and uh, I want to broadcast some of the best ideas um, that people are uh, sprouting in order to get through these times. Um, so I think if you've been paying attention over the last couple of weeks, um, and by paying attention I mean staring endlessly at your phone and your computer on Instagram and all the different um, new and old uh, social media sites, you're seeing a lot of creativity. Um, whether it's live streams, whether it's live concerts um, being organized by uh, the different media sites, whether it's live interviews, whether it's people releasing music, um, whether it's memes, um, seemingly everyone, including my aged parents, are putting out media. Um, because what else do we have to do? Um, and I think what we're living through right now is something incredibly unprecedented from a media standpoint. Um, and harnessing that and figuring out how to make it work for you, whether you're a record label or an artist, a DJ, a producer, um, figuring out how to do that is your new job. Um, it's all of our job to figure out how to harness this moment and to make it work for our brands. Um, and if you've been feeling helpless, if you've been feeling frozen by this moment, if you're terrified about money, if you're terrified in general, um, everyone's there with you. I'm there with you and I've been frozen too. I'm frozen for moments of the day. But um, what we need to do as a community as well as as creators is to get organized and, um, and be positive and to harness this moment and to, uh, to, to, to harness this moment and integrate it into our brands and to put out our music and our form into the world and to try to figure out how to make money at this time because we all need to make a living and um, that's, that's your job. That's everyone's job right now. And to help organize that, that project management, um, because this is project management, um, I think every artist or record label um, needs to think of themselves as a television network. Um, there's multiple different forms in which to broadcast your television network, but you are all now producers of television or video or whatever. Um, and you need to program a channel. You need to fund that channel. You need to create an endless supply of content to that channel. You need to drive viewership of your channel. And you're competing against all the other channels out there. Um, and so the better you do at organizing your channel, the more viewers you're going to get, the more money you're going to make, and the more that you're going to emerge out of this uh, experience with a dedicated viewership. Um, the same thing as if you are currently doing all that um, within a live show context um, or with a purely recorded music context. Um, so, so that's what I wanted to talk about a little bit more. Um, with respect to music distribution and recording music and putting it out there into the world, um, I'll tell you everything that I know. Um, and again, um, I'm not an expert. All I know is the data points that um, I get to see as part of my job at Symphonic and the publicly available data points that are out there about the music industry. Um, uh, streaming is fluctuating heavily, as it does. Um, 
we don't have enough data points whether to say that streaming really is triumphantly down, however it is down. Um, it is certainly not up. Um, so that is the state of the streaming business as we know it right now. It's not down for everyone. It's up for some. It's certainly down for um, music perhaps that is listened to during workouts or commuting. It, it's fluctuating and it's different for every musical segment. Um, and it's going to take weeks or months to figure out what this really is. Um, but we'll get there. And for now, we're going to consider this a positive in general for releasing music. So to the, the answer to your question, uh, should I be releasing music right now? The answer is yes, emphatically yes. Uh, release a lot of music. Um, take advantage of this time and put a lot of music out there and promote the music using your television network. Um, so we're seeing uh, some different uh, platforms emerging um, and maybe not emerging but um, being catapulted into the spotlight. Right now uh, Twitch especially um, has become really popular. Um, both Instagram and um, and you know some of the different game platforms are becoming um, more and more popular, and bands, artists, um, gamers are using different platforms based on who their audience are, um, and uh, and are using that correctly. Um, but basically, if you're uh, if you've been a somewhat passive uh, creator of online social media content, um, now's the time to get organized. And um, you're going to have to pick a platform um, because you can't do everything and you can't be everywhere and your fans aren't everywhere. So the first part of figuring out how to operate and where to put out your television channel is to figure out where your fans are. Um, there's demographics available to the public as far as who uh, and what age groups, um, what countries, um, what uh, sub-interest groups are on what social networks and find that out. Um, if your fans are a little bit older, Facebook might be the place. Um, if your fans are Instagram uh, types of peeps, that's where you need to be. If they're gamers, um, Twitch might be the right network. Um, uh, if you are, you know, if you're younger, if you're making hip-hop, uh, uh, TikTok might be the place for you. Um, so, so find your network figure out the best practices for putting out content on that platform and become the best at it. Um, that's your job. That's your job. Um, so to start to organize this, um, if you have been a artist or a label that has not been active in creating dedicated fans, um, now is the time to do that. How do you build fans? Um, you can start by finding other bands or artists or record labels like you, becoming part of that community, um, following the people following those artists or record labels, commenting, being part of that community, and you will start to gain followers. Um, and as you start putting content out there, creating shareable content, um, you're going to begin um, driving followers. You can do digital advertising relatively inexpensively, um, but your job is to build the audience for your television network. Um, and there's lots of articles online about fan mining. Um, find them. Uh, it can be what feel like a painful exercise, but it's what we all must do to build our followers. There's no uh, magic bullet for building your network. You just got to get in there and do the work. Um, so next thing you want to do is focus on programming. Um, if you are in a band, if you are part of a collective and you have multiple people who can create content, you need to schedule that shit out. Um, whether it's focus on creating a live show, um, focus on breaking out your, the, um, the inspiration behind your artwork, whether it's going into the studio to, um, to show fans how you're making your music, whether it's talking about the recipes you're making in your kitchen, reading your poetry, 
um, book recommendations, whatever, whatever you can do to create engaging content that is going to make your television network sticky um, to your fans, that's what you need to do. You need to get organized, you need to whiteboard, you need to create notes, you need to create a project plan, you need to create a content schedule, and you need to put it out there. Yes, you do need to be that organized. You absolutely do, otherwise it'll drop. And you need to create consistent content, you need to make engaging content, and you need to put it out there. So I think one thing for, um, for creative types that can be pretty hard is project management, but this is a project, and you need to organize that stuff. Um, and so create a content, content schedule. Figure out who, what collaborators is part of your label or your, your band or um, artists that you work with can contribute things to your, um, your programming. Schedule it out and schedule out as much as possible. Who's out there right now? We got some questions. Um, let's, go to, let's go to the callers. Callers. Writers. Um, Nathan Hunter, why do I think streaming is down? Um, I think that there's been a massive uh, cataclysmic change in um, society. Nothing is normal right now. Everything is fluctuating. Um, and everyone's routines are different. So that could be a reason why any number of things are down. Um, I don't know anything more than that other than we've had this massive change. And I think that people will start getting back to some form of normal here fairly soon. Um, Sam, with streaming down in some form or another, do you feel utilizing video content to drive back streaming is more beneficial than ever? Being that YouTube is up 1% to 2% and Spotify, etc., is down 7 to 11%. Absolutely. YouTube is thriving right now, um, and it's no surprise. I think that um, creating video content, something that people can watch, people are looking for an experience that distracts them completely. And so I think just intuitively, uh, music and audio, video, um, full-form content is going to be a little bit more engaging than just music. Um, people aren't commuting right now. People aren't working out at the gym right now. So um, music, some of those um, contextual times when piece, people listen to music are not happening. Um, and, uh, and so YouTube is thriving, both because it's free, it's engaging, um, you can get stuck inside of it. Um, using YouTube, I think, is a really powerful platform. Um, it's also a really easy platform to use. Um, Jordan, hello. Um, what do I believe are some of the best online platforms that translate into hard ticket sales as opposed to passive, passive fans? Well, I think that as far as live ticket sales go, um, that's a complex thing because no one's going to shows right now. But um, I think your question is how best to monetize, what platforms are best to monetize um, whatever you're doing? And um, the answer to that is it depends. Um, it depends on uh, who fans are and where you've already been. Um, it's going to be really, really hard right now for you if you've only been creating content and fans on Instagram to all of a sudden become a TikTok star and to figure out how to monetize that. So um, I think it's best, my personal opinion, is you need to figure out how to monetize the audience that you already have on the platform that you're most comfortable with. And um, you, know, you can integrate um, Venmo, you can integrate Cash App, um, PayPal, and, um, and I'll talk about uh, how to ask for money um, in a little bit because I think that's a huge obstacle for a lot of people, for all of us, frankly. Um, but I'm going to ask, a, uh, I'm going to read a couple more questions and try to dig in there. Brent Tactic, um, amazing agent out there. Um, with the live sector of the biz taking a complete nosedive, um, do I anticipate live streaming to potentially replace some of that lost income? Do I, just see, do I see a distributor like Symphonic creating a monetization channel for live streaming for your clients? Um, no, I don't think that live streaming is going to replace um, a great deal of live income. Um, it just, uh, it, it may over time, but I don't think that we're going to be um, in our houses for years and people going to see live shows is never going to change in, in any um, entertainment medium. Um, and there's just an unprecedented 
within a live streaming capacity price that uh, people can charge for tickets um, now. And so um, live streaming is going to supplement um, some of that business, but not nearly all of it. Um, for some, maybe it will if you get really good at creating incredible content that goes beyond your network. And I'm sorry again for, for using the word content. I too find it a little bit of a disgusting word, um, but uh, I'm using it to um, to represent different forms of music and media um, without saying all those things. Um, so sorry again for using the word content. Um, anyway, so live streaming is there. No, Symphonic's not going to create its own network for live streaming. Um, I think what we're trying to do is. Um, we're trying to find our clients that are doing it really well on their own platforms and try to direct people to best practices as they are evolving right now. Um, I think there's a lot of great um, platforms right now, probably more than the world needs. Um, and uh, there's no one right one for, for you um, or for, for anyone. It's, uh, there's a lot of great tools out there. And, and uh, I think just coming back to what I've been saying, is you need to find the one that works best for you. Um, and if none are working particularly better than others, find the one where you believe that your potential audience is and get really good at working that. Um, so let's talk a little bit about asking for money. Uh, everybody hates this. Everyone hates this. Have you ever done a Kickstarter for whatever crazy idea you've ever had? Um, if you've ever had to um, be in an audience where people are passing the hat. If you've been on stage when there's been um, asking people to come to your shows, um, asking people to um, asking people to, um, to to join paid networks, um, it's really hard to ask for money. Um, but uh, this is an unprecedented time, and we're all going to have to get comfortable with it. Um, so. How to feel okay about asking for money. Um, you have to provide value. You have to entertain people. Um, expecting people to just give you money when you're not putting anything out in the world that is valuable um, is foolhardy, my friends, uh, unfortunately. Um, no one's just going to give you money. Um, and so you have to create something that is meaningful. Um, and you need to put out a lot of it. And you need to provide value. And then asking for money when people find that valuable um, is a lot easier um, because you are entertaining. Um, that is ultimately our job as musicians. We are entertainers. Um, let's not get over uh, intellectual about it. We are there to entertain people. Um, and uh, whether, uh, whether you're creating music or poetry, um, you are right now a entertainer and you are putting something out there in the world to help people get through this time, to entertain them, to give them solace, to help them with grief. Um, and yes, you do get to ask for money when you put that out into the world. Um, people don't have to give it to you, but you do have to figure out how to ask for it. Um, and figuring out the best way to do that um, is, is up to you. There's lots of great methods. Um, there's uh, putting your Venmo or your Cash App um, or your PayPal link in the comments of a live stream. Um, my Venmo, by the way, is, uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, you don't have to give me any money. Um, the figuring out how to do that and, and how that feels comfortable to you, um, even if it doesn't feel comfortable, get comfortable with it because you got to eat and uh, you can ask for money. Um, So figuring out how to monetize your life in the bunker is your job. Again, um, you can't get too organized around this. Um, whatever you're doing, um, whether you're, um, you're making music live or putting out recordings or promoting your record, um, whatever you're doing, um, get used to asking for money. Um, so, um, you know, I, I think that the the challenge that um, we're all going to have with live streaming is if you've logged into Instagram lately, um, you've seen that everyone is going live. 
Um, there's a whole lot of live streams. Um, so figuring out how to make yours stand out, that's your job. Um, some ways to do that, because um, it can feel a lot of times like you're lost in a sea of live streams and you're only getting access to the ones um, that are being pushed out to you. Um, do some research first. If you're lost and you don't know where to start, um, start looking at artists in and uh, outside your particular genre. In fact, gleaning from another um, another uh, arts, you know, art form, whether it's um, actors or, or comedians, um, people who are creating that content as well, um, that can be a good place to find inspiration for musicians um, so that you're not doing the exact same thing as everyone else. Um, creating something unique, something that your publicists, if you have them, can publicize. Um, it's hugely important um, and uh, it's your job just like creating unique, unique music is part of the gig of creating music is creating unique content is part of your job. Um, do we have any more questions? I feel like I'm talking a lot and my cat hasn't popped in to enter you all. Um, and I want to make sure that I'm providing you guys value. Um, let's drop some more questions in here, friends. Who we got? So once again, um, my name is Nick. Uh, I work at Symphonic Distribution, um, which is an independent distributor um, based in uh, Tampa, Florida, Brooklyn, New York, Nashville, and Bogota, Colombia, um, as well as in uh, other places throughout the world. Um, we are 100% independent distributor. Um, we work with both artists and record labels of all genres. Um, and we pride ourselves in doing things like that, doing things like this rather, um, having conversations, real conversations, substantive conversations with our clients talking straight um, and figuring out how to, um, how to handle problems and challenges together. Um, there's no right way to do this, and none of us um, have major label money that is fueling you know, massive productions. Um, we are indie and scrappy, and we're figuring out how to do our jobs and to help promote music um, in real time as well, um, and our 50 plus person company is focused on figuring out how to help our clients survive and to thrive during good times and bad times. Um, we do consider ourselves a, a family of uh, musicians and artists um, and business people and, uh, and figuring out how to get through um, crazy shit is part of the gig. Um, and uh, for those of you just tuning in now, um, you know, one of the things that I prided myself on throughout my career is adapting to change. And um, I think that it's a lesson that I've learned from a career standpoint um, is if you get good at dealing with change and disruption and working well during turbulent times, um, you will never be unemployed because there's no shortage of turbulence. And um, that same model goes for artists and for record labels. If you create a brand and a mentality that is meant to weather any storm, you will be able to survive a lot longer than people who have not thought about that, who are creating um, music in a vacuum and who aren't thinking about what happens if that medium that they have created or that they've popped up in um, goes down. If you become a uh, TikTok star, if you become a someone who's only big on Instagram, if you're someone who streams really well because you're a playlist driven artist but you don't have a network on Instagram, you're now finding out why that's bad. Um, we need to be well-rounded people who and artists and businesses who can adapt um, because if you don't think that major change is going to come after this, um, just think about what life was like three weeks ago. Um, it's a whole lot different now. Um, so figuring out how to deal with change, um, figuring out how to thrive, figuring out how to make money um, during good times and bad, um, that's all of our jobs right now. And um, uh, we've gotten a rude awakening as far as what, um, how public health 
can uh, can infiltrate our lives as artists and independent business people. And um, we're all trying to adapt um, in real time. Um, I am, and I know that you all are. Um, um, yeah. Uh, what else we got out there, friends? Let's uh, other questions. Okay. Um, Randy Ojeda, can the funk be stopped, or will you keep bringing the funk? Um, my friends, I will keep bringing the funk, um, for I know nothing else in this life. And uh, um, sometimes you just got to sit back and play the funk, you know, even when it's raining outside, um, even when there's thunder, um, even when I am alone in my house, uh, except for my cat. Uh, sometimes that's the best time to play the funk. Um, Wolf Schultz. Um, what up, Wolf? I heard streaming numbers have been down since the pandemic. So you see that? Is now a good time to release music, or would you wait until this is over? Um, music is stream. Everything is fluctuating right now. The short answer to the question is yes, release music. Absolutely, do not wait. We do not know when this crazy time of life is going to change. We do know that people are inside their house. They are consuming media, whether they've chosen... Um, uh, Netflix over music right now because it gives them a little bit more distraction. Um, they're still in their house, release music and figure out how to get them. Um, uh, everyone is talking about the Tiger King. Um, it's just one show that has captured the zeitgeist of this bizarre experience that we're all living and that's living uh, inside. And um, I don't know, it's just one thing that's captured people's attention. Um, you need to be that next thing. Um, and there, there's absolutely no reason why an album or a live stream um, or whatever our form you're working within can't become the next Tiger King um, if that's what you want to do and uh, hopefully with uh, better facial hair. Um, Ali, what if an artist or label hasn't monetized on TikTok or YouTube before? How would they start and should they do this before or after they start releasing content during this lockdown? Um, if you have yet to, to monetize your music on YouTube, uh, yes, you should begin doing that, absolutely. Um, that is something that Symphonic can help you with. Um, we do monetize YouTube for our clients, which is um, not a complicated process. It's basically um, activating uh, the content ID. Um, we distribute there, and then once your music has been monetized, um, there's lots of options you can do for making money off both your videos and people listening to your audio as well as um, people using your music. Um, so yes, stopping to monetize YouTube and TikTok is something that you should do. Um, TikTok's a little bit more complicated than YouTube, um, but that's something that Symphonic or your favorite neighborhood distributor can help you with. Um, but we're better than all of them. Um, so it's probably, it, it's in your best interest to do it through Symphonic. Um, hi, Stacy Taylor. How you doing? Hi, Allison. Um, how are you doing out there? Um, Brent, what am I bumping during this quarantine? Um, any predictions on some breakout genres artists during this time period? Um, I am, uh, what am I bumping? I haven't changed um, my listening or TV habits. Um, and uh, so I'm bumping music from our clients. Um, uh, I'm listening to Bultra. I'm listening to uh, Adrian Young and his, his labels, Jazz is Dead and Linear Labs, Angela Munoz, um, Lauren Odin, The Midnight Hour. Um, I'm a jazz guy. I'm listening to lots of classic and new school jazz. Um, Mike Casey. Um, uh, I'm listening to a ton. I'm also reading books. Um, and uh, I'm, uh, I'm taking it all in. It's been a great time. Um, um, any predictions on breakout genres or artists during this time? Um, uh, no, I don't think I do have any breakout predictions. Um, I think it's going to be people who are um, creating video content without a doubt. Um, but um, 
I'm, I'm going to check my Slack real quick in case I'm getting some good questions or in case my boss wants to pull me off the air. Um, I think that uh, this is a great time to listen to records. All right, I think I'm good. Um, this is a great time to listen to full albums, you guys. You're in your house. If you've been a playlist person all of your life, get some headphones, put on an entire album, and listen to it. Lay down on the floor on your back, put on a record, and listen to the first side, and then get up, turn the record over, and listen to the other side. Listen to it in the order that the artist intended. Um, too lazy to flip the record. Uh, hello, man boobs. We all need a little bit of exercise. Get up and flip the record over. Um, but playlists are cool too. Um, thank you to Spotify and Apple for all of the playlists you um, provide to Symphonics clients. We thank you very much. Um, you're all beautiful people, and um, sorry for dogging on technology companies earlier. Um, uh, you know, no offense, no offense. Um, where's Jeff Stemp from, from Spotify? You out there, Jeff? Jeff, we love you. Um, you're such a good programmer. You're a good man. Um, we love you. Um, all of our other programmers and curators at all the other um, DSPs, Apple and Pandora and... Um, and uh, you're all out there. You know who you are. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you, everyone, for what you do. Thank you um, to the people who are making great music and who are creating music fearlessly right now. Um, it's, uh, it's really important. Um, Jordan, uh, best strategies to build an audience on YouTube? Um, uh, well, it's, uh, I think it, YouTube is... Uh, Think about it as the same as um, any other network to a, to a sense. Um, if you are running a channel, um, subscribing to other channels, um, following and being part of the communities of videos uh, or content that is like the content that you're putting out there. Again, sorry for using the word content. Um, that part of it. Um, there are easy ways to advertise on YouTube if you're a Symphonic client. Um, and we can help you build an advertising strategy. It's cheap. Um, you can do it for uh, tens of dollars. Um, if you've got a little bit more money, hundreds of dollars, but you do not need to spend thousands of dollars. There's also great technology that we at Symphonic employ to help um, find audiences that are like yours on YouTube. Um, and uh, so that's something that we do for our clients as part of our YouTube optimization strategies is figure out how to find audiences that are like yours and to optimize your videos and content so that um, people watch. Um, uh, Jacob, um, Heather Pearls, um, is releasing singles weekly too much? Um, I would say that no, it's not. Um, but every, everyone's audiences are different. Um, I think right now what we do have is a, um, a gumbo, a, pot, a large pot of chili of streaming media coming at us right now. And um, there's a lot of it, and there's a lot of distractions, including things outside of our computers, um, dogs, children, um, lives, um, washing of the hands, which seems to take like a seven hours a day. Um, so making your content stand out. And uh, if you are releasing music weekly, the, g the good thing about that is that some of it's going to break through. Maybe people don't get every single single, um, every single single you put out, maybe ca not capture every single one of them, but they're going to get one. And um, now is an incredible time to recompile your back catalog, um, to release um, new compilations of music that's already out. Did you know that you can do that? You can do that, you guys. Um, go deep in that catalog. Create thematic content. Um, these are songs that are great for um, listening to music alone. Um, you can create virtual compilations. They're a great way to revive your back catalog. You can release um, B-sides, rarities, um, instrumental versions. Um, this is an incredible time to get super nerdy about your music. Um, Maybe you've got um, you've got stems or acapellas available, and you can use releasing lyric only um, versions of your music as a way to talk about um, the lyrics you're writing. Um, break it down into narratives. Um, release that. Make it a part of what you're doing. Um, uh, same thing with instrumentals. Um, 
uh, labels. You can be releasing um, instrumentals from your bands. Um, highlight your drummers. Create a compilation of the best drum tracks on the on the uh, from the albums that you've released. Um, you can do the same thing with uh, you know guitar albums, but nobody wants that. What people want are drum tracks. That's what they want. This is my show, and we're going to talk about drums. And nobody can say shit because this is my live stream, and um, you know, that's what I do. Um, Omar, what's up? Thank you for being a distribution partner. Um, how important is it to get your music creatively right now? Um, right now, it's incredibly important to be creative. Um, you got to be because you're competing against every Tom Din Harry um, with a Spotify account or an Instagram account. Um, so you got to be sharp. Sarah, how you doing? Are there any new formats, web, radio, podcasts, or platforms you'd recommend for artists and labels to check out right now? Hell yeah. Um, Podcasts. I'm a huge podcast nerd. I listen to them all the time. I find myself listening to music. I, sorry, I find myself listening to podcasts about making music um, a ton now. I love it because I'm a gigantic dork. Um, but I love uh, people creating podcasts about um, about bands or music scenes. Um, there was a short form podcast on the band Bratmobile. Um, shout out to Molly Newman out there that I listened to. That was super cool. Um, there are a ton out there, and anyone can create their own podcast and put it out into the world. Of course, getting people to listen to it is something entirely different. Um, that's harder. But um, yeah, um, um, that's something that people can do. Podcasts is a, is a really great way to break down your music into episodic content that you can put out there. Um, you can you can also um, podcasts are a great way to integrate um, advertisers or monetization channels um, for uh, for driving revenue. Um, again, um, how are you asking for money? Are you using Venmo? Are you using PayPal? Are you using Twitch for donations? Um, one thing to remember from uh, this lengthy television monologue that I'm doing here for you is. Get comfortable asking people for money. You gotta figure it out. People love you, and if they do, even if it's five people, um, can they pitch in for five bucks? Um, were they gonna come to a live show? Um, did you have a tour planned? Um, what can you do to um, to keep your audience who had bought in tickets, who have gotten refunds? What can you do to entertain them and keep them glued to your network? Um, create special. Um, special uh, shows um, on the nights that you're going to be touring. Create um, music or part of your show that is dedicated to the city you're going to be in. Um, write a song on the spot about Toledo. Um, I don't know, but that's something you can do. Um, creativity is going to be super important um, for all of us right now because there's a ton of, uh, there's a ton of uh, competition. Um, I've only got 22 people watching this live stream right now. And um, there's a lot more people that could be watching this. And um, I blame myself personally. I could be doing a better job. Um, both uh, I could be handsomer, more funny, more knowledgeable. I could have promoted this better. Um, and I'll do so next time. But uh, um, you've got to do the same thing. Hello, Jim. Um, see you later, Brett. Thanks for, thanks for stopping by. Um, Jim, do you think it's important to become huge in the market you live in? What if you have a radio station like WN, WMN that doesn't support or pay attention to locals? Um, uh, no, no, I think the um, you don't need to be big in the city that you live in. I think that one of the values, if you're an artist, of working with record labels is um, that uh, if you're making music that does not make sense, um, to the audience that lives in your market. If you're in Iceland and you're, you're making um, Riot Girl records, um, you know, a label like Kill Rockstars, um, someone who focuses on that genre and has that audience built in is a great um, resource for that. Um, you can find your market. Um, it doesn't need to be literally the market that you live in. Um, geography has um, become quite arbitrary. Um, as far as where people can become popular. Um, thank you for your question, Jim. Um, 
Uh, Stacy, thank you so much. Symphonic created a um, a program called Support Independent Music, where we are helping to magnify um, our artists uh, that we're working with, helping to sell their merch. Um, selling your merch, by the way, um, how could I have forgotten? Selling merch is a great way right now to make some money. Um, do you have a bunch of merch sitting under your bed? Yes, you do. Do you have merch sitting in your closet? You could sell anything. Um, sell your merch that you're going to sell on tour. Um, make it really easy for people to buy. Um, bundle stuff. Um, do it. That's a great way to make money right now. Um, despite the horror that might be going to the post office, wear gloves, um, protective gear, um, use stamps.com. Do whatever you got to do. Um, this podcast is brought to you by stamps.com. Um, stamps.com. Uh, uh, send me money. Um, contact me in the comments and I'll give you my Venmo address. Um, anyway, you got to do it. Um, sell some merch. Um, yeah. Um, but thank you, Stacy. Um, Symphonic lives and breathes um, by independent music. Um, we, do, we are not supported by a major label. Um, we are funded um, by selling music. We make a percentage of the music that our artists and labels make from, from streaming. We do not charge an upfront fee. Um, we only make money when you make money. Um, so we're out here trying to help artists and labels figure out how to make money. Um, that's what's different about Symphonic. Um, and we're really proud to be independent and proud to be scrappy, even if it make it challenging during hard times like this. Um, better to be independent and to control your own destiny um, than to, uh, to not. Um, who else? Who else has got questions? Um, I also do dream interpretations. Um, and, uh, you know, give me a shot. Um, uh, I've been doing this for about 51 minutes now. I'm probably going to wrap this up over the next eight or so minutes. Um, so this is your last chance. Um, I'd like to thank my cat for giving me the opportunity to do this live stream um, without distraction. Um, I appreciate you. We've been in the house together for uh, a long time now, and um, we have to give each other space, you guys. Um, how's everybody getting along with their families? Um, are you in a tough relationship right now? Um, do you have children that you're basically homeschooling? Um, I'm going to send out a, a lot of love to my parent friends who are working jobs, uh, who are taking care of their children, who are cooking, who are living in small and damp New York City apartments. Um, man, um, good for you. Thank you. Wait. Here we go. There we go. She's here, you guys. Hello, Neela. This is Neela, everyone. She's on Instagram at Russian Blue Neela. Um, follow her. Um, she uses Venmo. Um, Rio, I do do palm reading. Just put your um, put your palm against the screen um, and uh, just put it up there. Just press press your palm against your your computer camera. Um, I'm going to put my ear up and I'm listening to the vibrations of your palm. And that sounds like you're going to have a good day. Um, to all my friends in Nashville, you've had a really hard fucking year. Um, 2020 has been rough, but um, Nashville is one of the greatest cities on earth. And uh, you guys are going to rise. Um, you're going to rise up uh, better than ever. Um, my heart goes out to John Prine right now and his family. He is suffering from the coronavirus. He is one of... Uh, um, the, the greatest songwriters and performances and uh, performers in uh, music history, and uh, he's suffering right now. So my love to John Prine. Stacy, I will be doing cat videos um, after this. Um, perhaps, if you guys feel like it's uh, valuable, I will create um, many more cat videos, and I will figure out how to ask for money. I see you over there, Allie. Um, Nashville strong, absolutely. Um, we appreciate you. New York City. Um, my heart, um, despite that I fled to the mountains of the Catskills, um, uh, I am there with you. Um, New York is where I live, and uh, we're going to get through this. Um, and uh, hopefully um, all the rich people 
will leave New York and it will be taken over again by the artists who make New York, New York. Um, and uh, I think that um, this is another opportunity of all this is we're going to enter a new time in society. Um, and I think that at the time um, when uh, we've been experiencing a real um, relegation of the arts to um, almost get a ghettoization of the arts um, outside of major cities where artists can't anymore. Um, and uh, if anything good comes of uh, what's going on in New York right now, um, hopefully rich people will be afraid to live there. And um, Soho and the East Village will be um, taken over once again by, uh, by downtown artists and musicians. Um, shout out to the ADL Atlanta. Um, uh, Atlanta, what a good town. What an incredible music town Atlanta is. What a um, collaborative environment um, you guys live in. Um, I've spent more time in Atlanta over the last couple of years than I, than I ever have and I've been so impressed by how supportive everyone is there to each other. Um, and uh, so hello to everyone tuning in from Atlanta. Um, well, let me do one dream interpretation one more dream interpretation before I close out. Rio, I don't have a Cardi B. I don't know. I can't do it. Um, uh, what else? What else? All right, I have four minutes on here. Um, I'm not going to sing. I don't think that would be good for any of you. Um, thank you all for tuning in. Um, this has been fun. Um, I believe strongly in uh, in independent art and music. Um, I've been a drummer my whole life. Um, and uh, it is our job right now as musicians to, um, to maintain a pulse, to entertain, to reflect back the times in art. Um, this is a truly fucked up time politically throughout the world. Um, this is a time when artists um, thrive. Um, it's our job to put um, not just positivity, it can be negativity, it can be a reflection of the times, it can be tragic, but we need to make art and put it out there um, and support each other and uh, figure out how to help each other. Um, so figuring out how to support other artists um, is key um, and uh, labels. Um, now is your time to challenge your artists. Um, it is your job to challenge your artists and your bands to create music and artwork to reflect the times. Yes, it is. It is your responsibility. Um, and uh, artists sometimes need uh, organization and project management more than anyone. Um, that's your job, record label guy, record label girl. Um, figure out how to help your artists survive during this time. Help them program their music. Help them put out more music. Help them figure out how to create the right videos, even though they can't get video directors to come to where they live. Um, you have to help them. That's your job. Um, that's your job. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you, Sarah. I appreciate you both. Um, Jorge, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I, I see you over there. Um, uh, guys, this has been a real pleasure. Um, you can follow me at uh, Nick Gordon at Nick Gordon on Instagram at the Nick Gordon on Twitter. Um, I try to put out um, both words and posts that are inspirational and positive and that help people uh, figure out how to move um, and to create um, productive businesses and art that finds an audience um, during both good and bad times. Um, this is what I do for a living. Um, I have no other job skills. Um, I work with independent music and independent labels um, and independent distributors. That's what I do um, through good times and bad times and through format changes and pandemics and, uh, and thunderstorms, through, uh, whatever it is. Um, that's what I do. Figure out what you do. Become the best at it. Figure out how to monetize your audience. Um, figure out how to find the right platform and get organized, program. Program your television network. Um, do it right. Be organized. Create a content calendar. Um, nobody's going to do it for you, you guys. Um, if you're frozen, if you feel um, 
if you feel weak, if you're ill, if you know people that are ill, um, the best way to do that for artists, um, channel it into something positive, um, channel into something entertaining, um, channel into something painful and sad. It doesn't matter, but channel it into what you do. And, um, and that's how we're going to get through this together. Um, would love to hear from any of you. Um, thank you so much to Symphonic Distribution um, for giving me this platform. And uh, I'm proud to work for this great company, a true independent company. Um, and uh, everyone stay safe out there. Um, send in much love. Um, and we'll talk to you all soon.